This ICT concept we're going to talk about today is probably one of the best ICT concepts that you can use. And it's also my favorite concept. And if you've been following along watching my videos on my channel, you probably already know what this ICT concept is. Yes, it is a inversion variable gap. And also one of the reasons why I like this ICT concept is because the strategies, confirmation and bias you get with using a inversion fair value gap is just far more better in my eyes than other ICT concepts. So that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. Now I'm going to talk a lot about the inversion fair value gap, but some of the things I'm specifically going to make a deep dive into is first of all the basics on how a inversion fair value gap looks like. And after that, I'm going to show you a model that you can use or a strategy that you use with the inversion fair value gap. And lastly, also how we can use a inversion fair value gap for bias and confirmation. First, we have to talk about how we can identify a inversion fair value gap. Now, a normal fair value gap looks like this from the high of this wick up to the low of this wick. This is a normal bullish fair value gap as the wicks are not overlapping the body. And I have made a video about that, so if you don't know what a normal Faraday gap is, check that video out. Then over here we have a bearish Faraday gap from the low of this wick down to the high of this wick. Now this bearish Faraday gap is made to send price lower, right? But when price makes a close above that with a body, a candlestick that closes above that Faraday gap, it now becomes an inversion Faraday gap. So at this candle close, this bearish fair value gap is an inversion fair value gap. And an inversion fair value gap basically does the opposite of where the fair value gap bias was. So this was sent, made to send price lower. Now it is an inversion fair value gap, so it's made to send price higher. And if this bullish fair value gap were to get a candle close below it, then it now used to send price lower. So a inversion fair value gap is the opposite of a normal fair value gap. Now that we know how to identify a inversion fair value gap, we're going to combine that with a strategy. This simple inversion fair value gap strategy is made of five rules. The first one being price should deliver from a fair value gap or sell side liquidity slash buy side liquidity. And right here we have a fair value gap where price reached up into to the tick at the consequent encouragement, then move lower. Second, we don't want to see Internal range liquidity get taken out before price makes a retracement into that inversion fair value gap. And down here, this is internal range liquidity. This little right here. And we see that has not yet been taken out, but now we want to see price makes a retracement and then take that low out. Third, we must see a candle close above or below the fair value gap. And right here, we see that price makes a close below the fair value gap, creating an inversion fair value gap. Fourth, we should have a drawn liquidity. And right here we see that we have relative equal lows, and one of the lows being the internal range liquidity. Fifth, only one inversion fair value gap. And what I mean by that is that we'd only want to see one inversion fair value gap and not two in the same general range. So over here we see that we have one fair value gap right here, and right under that we have another one. And here we see that we have one fair value gap but we don't have one down here. Now let's see if price makes a retracement up into this inversion fair value gap. And if we were to take a trade entry, we'd put our stop loss or exit the trade when price makes a close above the inversion fair value gap, because that would indicate that price is no longer willing to respect that inversion fair value gap and then target the relative equal lows, which would make a 1.3 per squad ratio. And we see price makes a retracement and the internal range liquidity has not been taken out. So that means the trade idea is still valid. And right here, price moves lower, sweeping that low. And we could actually also have got a two risk reward ratio trade if we wanted to. Now, how can we use this inversion fair value gap as a confirmation tool? Well, I use inversion fair value gap as a confirmation tool by price disrespecting a bullish PDRA as we know this is a bullish fair value gap and that means it should send price higher. And when I see price has delivered from a bearish fair value gap, then going into a bullish fair value gap and disrespecting that bullish fair value gap, it signals to me 
that Price is no longer respecting bullish Favelli gaps and is now on a sell program, meaning that every up-close candle is going to act as resistance and we sh should see every bearish PDRA get respected and price moving lower. So that's how we could also use inversion for value gap as a confirmation. Now let's move on to bias. Here on the one hour time frame, we can see the price reach up into a four hour fair value gap. Then after that price now reached lower, creating a inversion fair value gap. As we see, we actually have two inversion fair value gaps. And now this is where the bias becomes interesting. As we know, Inversion for value gaps gives us confirmation. And when we get confirmation that price is willing to move lower from a high time frame for value gap, that really settles the bias that we're willing to move lower. And also we see price create the immediate rebalance. So now we could be anticipating two expansion candles if price or if the bias is bearish. So let's go down into the time frame and see how we can use this to our advantage. Here on the one minute time frame, we can see that we have that four hour for value gap. And then we also have that one hour immediate rebalance occurring. Then at 8.30 in the AM session, price expanded lower, then closed lower at 9 AM, creating that one expansion candle to the downside. That means we could also be anticipating the next one hour candle to be an expansion candle. And that indicates the bias is lower. Now, here we want to look for a inversion for value gap setup. And we see up here the price has not reached up into this fair value gap. But if you suddenly go up to the two minute time frame, there is a large imbalance, which price already has reached up for. That means we could be anticipating lower prices. Here we have internal range liquidity, which has yet not been taken out. Here price makes an inversion fair value gap as we see closest below it, also closing below an existing inversion for value gap. Now we want to see a retracement going up into this singular, it's a singular inversion for value gap. Then after that, taking out the internal range liquidity. And right here we see price do make a retracement. And if we were to take a trade entry, we could enter at the retracement. Then we would exit the trade when price closes above that inversion for value gap and then target internal range liquidity. And as we see, price takes out the internal range liquidity, which was our draw on liquidity. If we just run this example over the rules we talked about before, well, the first one being price should deliver from a fair value gap or take out sell side liquidity slash buy side liquidity. So here we saw price ran buy side liquidity and on the two minute time frame price reached up into this large imbalance. Then the second rule, we don't want to see internal range liquidity get taken out before price makes a retracement. And we saw price made a retracement and then after that ran internal range liquidity, which we want to see. Third, we must see a candle close below slash above the fair value gap. And here we see a clear close with a lot of momentum closing below that inversion fair value gap. Fourth, we should have an obvious draw on liquidity. And for this example, the internal range liquidity was pretty obvious as price was pretty close to that internal range liquidity. Fifth, only a singular inversion for value gap. Here we saw there was no other fair value gap than this one right here. So this example fulfilled all the criteria on the symbol IFG strategy.